Okay, now we'll move on to those fluids are still at rest, okay, but they are compressible. Okay, so now the analysis changes a bit. Now, I would just like to spend some time talking about them. You know, if you have PR, gases like air, nitrogen, or hydrogen, okay, they're certainly compressible, meaning to say that the density does change given the certain changes in the height. Okay, you move up in the atmosphere, the, the density changes. Liquids, you can kind of assume them to be incompressible, but now let's just handle gases for, for a bit, okay. However, there's, there's another thing about them okay, that I want you to know. Okay, remember we're tackling this equation over here. So the change in pressure uh, with a change in the elevation or a change in Z is equal to the negative specific weight. Now we know that the specific weight is simply density multiplied by gravity, right? So this density changes and that's why the specific weight changes. However, for gases like air, hydrogen and nitrogen, okay, the, the density, okay, it's very small. Okay, so then the density is small. What does the density small tell us? Well, the density is small means to say that the change in the pressure due to the height will also be small, okay? That means that we can also neglect elevation changes or pressures, pressure changes due to the elevation changes if, okay, the, the Z is in the realm of, say, a few hundred feet, okay? You see, if the density is small, the specific weight is also small, and the change in the pressure will also be small. So we all want, we will also want to neglect that if z is in the realm of a few hundred feet, okay? That is still okay, we can use our previous equation, okay? But now, let's just move in the case where z is approximately thousand feet, okay? Now things change a bit, okay? Because when z is in the realm of a few thousand feet, the density change, so that's the specific weight, okay? And our analysis needs to change a bit. It wouldn't be that difficult, but it's still quite good to know, okay? So, we've got this equation over here. Remember, this is the basic equation in analyzing fluids at rest, fluids at rest over here. Okay, and we, there's also another equation which I did not bring up, which I hope you know, which is the, the, the perfect gas law or the, the law of a perfect gas. And that is the pressure is equals to the density that is rho uh, multiplied by the, the gas constant multiplied by temperature, okay? So if we got a certain gas of a certain uh, gas constant, wherever the gas may be in the world, okay, it's related by this law, and that is the density, the temperature, and the pressure, okay? So what do we know about the specific weight? The specific weight is the density times the, the gravity, right? So that we can rearrange this to give us, okay? Sorry, so I bring this over the other side, um, RT, okay? And basically this now is equals to times the gravity here like that, which is equals to the specific weight, okay? Now this one, we have taken into account the change in density, why? Because the pressure varies and the temperature varies, though there's a special case, but what does this equation tell us? Meaning to say that the pressure, the density will vary, right? And that will correspond to, to, uh, to the pressure being changing, right? So we're taking all that into account, okay? Now I'm just gonna substitute this equation over here, so this will give me the pressure, gravity, and RT, okay? So, separating variables and integrating the pressure, so over here, I have to bring the pressure to the other side, okay? So, dp and the pressure over here like so, okay, integrate and it's equals to minus or integrate grt, okay, and uh, dz, okay, from z1 to z2 and p1 to p2. Okay, so now, that is fine. However, there is still one more thing that we did not take care of and that is the temperature over here. Okay, now here's the confusing thing. As we move around the atmosphere, the temperature also changes. So basically, before we carry out the integration, we need to put another assumption, okay, to restrict us, and that is temperature is constant. The term for it is isothermal, okay, or isothermal layer, okay. That means we are moving along a layer which the temperature is constant. So in this case, we we'll specify the temperature as T0. Further analysis is needed to show when T0 is very, uh, changing using partial integration, okay? Partial derivatives, but never mind, we'll just analyze this for now. So if this is a constant, we can bring this out, okay? So I would have ln, okay, ln P1, sorry, ln P2, okay, take away P1, okay, is equals to, these are all constants, I can bring that out, so I got G, R, T, and I got a Z2, take away Z1, okay? So I will just do some rearranging, P2 is equal, take away P1 is equals to E uh, to the power of that whole thing over there. Okay, so it's E minus G, Z2, take away Z1, okay, and RT, okay. Now, as always, I wanna do some rearranging, okay. Sorry, is, is that correct?
So now carry on with the integra integration, okay? I would write P2, take away P1, this would be ln over here, okay, because it's 1 divided by P, okay, and it's equals to negative G over RT. We will bring this one out because, like I said, we are in an isothermal layer where T is constant, so we specify as T0, and then we got a Z2, take away Z1, like so, okay? And finally, dealing with the, the ln function, okay, this is basically e to the power of this is equals to this, okay, and then I can rearrange. So, okay, let's just write it out. P2 take away P1 is equals to e to the power of this thing over here. So, g, z2 take away z1, take away r, t0, okay? And then what I want to do is that I will probably want to rearrange for P2. Rearrange for P2? Yeah, rearrange for P2. So, P2 is equals to P1, okay, E, and this bracket over here. Sorry, this um, equation over here. RT, no. Okay, so as we have, as we can see, that really we need to set the conditions of the fluid that we're analyzing. Now we're analyzing a fluid at rest and it's a compressible fluid. So if it's a compressible fluid, the specific weight changes, the density changes, therefore we need to use the perfect gas law or the law of the perfect gas to really analyze the situation such that we want to calculate the new pressure too is P1 uh, times this expression over here. However, we've imposed on ourselves another condition and that is the isothermal layer. That is that the temperature is constant, that's why we can put as T0. So really, this subject is quite difficult in the sense that we need to isolate certain cases. You got a fluid that's compressible and it's isothermal, use this equation over here. You got a fluid that is incompressible, use the previous equation. You got a fluid that's compressible and, it's, and the temperature is not constant, need to use another equation, okay? So basically, let's just leave it as that. That the fluid at rest, a compressible fluid in an isothermal layer, the change in pressure is given by this equation over here. Okay, so let's see more fluids coming up. Thanks.